Hey, welcome everyone back to the channel. If you're new around here, consider subscribing because on this channel, what we're doing is we're taking a look at hardware, software, drawing techniques, and film techniques, mashing them all together so we can tell our own stories. I've been trying to use my iPad more for the planning of my animation so then when I come to the computer, I can just hit the ground running. And what I figured out is I can use Rough Animator and import the audio that I created for my cartoon cartoons, bring that audio into Rough Animator and then export it and then import that file into Adobe Animate. So let's go ahead and take a look. But first, And welcome back. Before we go too far into this process, I want to send a quick shout out to Jacob Kafka. He's the developer of Rough Animator. And when I was taking a look at some of the things that you can do in Rough Animator, I saw that he had this plugin is probably the wrong word. It's more of a script that you can uh, take your rough animator file off of your iPad and then bring it into Adobe Animate. If you're new to rough animator, rough animator is available on a lot of different devices. You can get it for the iPad, you can get it for Android devices. Uh, and now I, when I was looking around today, I saw that they have a version that you can run on your Windows or Macintosh PC. So I think that's really cool. And if it is is only Jacob building this like wow dude that's pretty impressive good job if you want to learn more about rough animator you can go to roughanimator.com and up there you see that Jacob has links to the Android Google Play Store uh, the Kindle Fire Store the App Store Apple App Store and then you have like free trials and stuff for the Windows and Mac versions and notice here that it's $4.99 and I know that you guys hear me talking a lot about Calipag. There's a lot of wonderful things about Calipag and there's a lot of wonderful things about Rough Animator. So I'll go back and forth and use both of these apps and $4.99 for an app that is this robust, I think that's a, that's a really good price. So if you're into 2D animation and doing it on the iPad, definitely take a look at Rough Animator. So now that we know a little bit more about Rough Animator, I'm gonna ask you guys to go to roughanimator.com slash to flash. Now, for those of you that don't know, Adobe Animate is the current version of Adobe's animation software. Before it was called Adobe Animate, it was Flash. It was called Adobe Flash. And if you really wanna go into it, uh, before Adobe, there was a company called Macromedia that built Flash. Adobe then went and bought Macromedia and through a rebranding, they, they renamed Flash to Adobe Animate. And if you really wanna get geeky, the people that actually created Flash, when they first released it, it was called Future Splash. I've been using Flash as an animation tool for a long time, not all the way back to Future Splash version, but definitely, uh, I think it was Flash 2.5, or to be safe, we'll say Flash 3. And one of the things that I have always, always wanted in Flash is to have a kind of like a Photoshop brush. So if you don't know, Flash or I need to stop that. Animate is a vector based animation tool, but sometimes I really just need a bitmap brush that I can go in there and do some rough pencil test. The difference between a vector brush and a bitmap brush, imagine uh, vectors are a mathematical equation that tells the computer what that curve should look like. Whereas a bitmap brush, you basically just have a bunch of pixels that make the line for you. Both brushes serve different needs, but together you have a really powerful team because you can do a rough animation with a bitmap brush and then go in and finalize everything with a vector brush. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that can do the rough animating in a vector brush. I just, for me, I just really like roughing things out with a bitmap brush. So with that, 
That is why I went through this journey trying to figure out this solution. And I'm excited to put this process to the test. And I'm going to be doing a lot of planning and a lot of rough animating. That's why they called it that. <laughs> this animation that I'm using as an example for this process, I've already used in one of my Artist Alfresco episodes. And if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link right there. Once you're at roughanimator.com slash to flash, that's T-O-F-L-A-S. H. Go ahead and drop down to download this flash extension and once you click on that you're going to get this ZXP file. What you're going to want to do is click on it and rename that ZXP to ZIP. Hit return and then it's going to ask you which one you want to use. Go ahead and use zip and open that up. If you double click on it on a Mac and I'm sorry if you're on a Windows machine a lot of this is the same, but I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to the Adobe Notes so it makes a little more sense for you guys. Once that's uncompressed, I'm going to double click and take a look at this rough animator to flash dot JSFL. And what JSFL stands for is JavaScript Flash. Now let's navigate to a page on the Adobe website. And over here, they're showing you how to install extensions. And this is the path for Mac, and this is the path for Windows. But there's been a couple changes since 2019. Number one, I'm on Adobe Animate 2021. Not to mention, Apple has come out with Big Sur, their latest operating system release. And so things have changed since 2019. So we're here at Carlos Gomez, which is the user name. So we're up to this point here. But if you look in that folder structure, there's no library folder. This is an incredibly useful shortcut for Mac users. And all it does is it shows and hides hidden files. You might be asking yourself, why are there hidden files on my Mac? And that's because Apple doesn't want you accidentally deleting files that might be important to the health of your computer. The shortcut is shift, command, and the period. And you see all of these hidden files in here. .vol, the bin, the cores, etc perfectly placed, etc, etc. So we're going to go to users, Carlos Gomez. Now let's see if we can find that library folder, which is right there. And then according to Adobe, we have to go to library. Application is the next folder and then support is the next one. However, what we're going to do is go into application support down to Adobe. We're going to find animate 2021. E-N-U-S, configuration, and then we're going to come to commands. And if you notice, that is where I already have that file already placed. Obviously, if you haven't done this yet, there's not going to be a file in there. All you would have to do is go back to this finder window, grab that JSFL file and drag it in there. And now that we have that file in place, we still have these hidden folders and files that we need to deal with. What I'm going to do is hit shift, command, and period again, and there, we're safe. No accidentally deleting things that might crash your entire system. Please be careful when you're playing with the shift, command, period, and accidentally deleting things. Please be careful. Now I'm going to flip over to Adobe Animate just to show you guys what we did. What I'm going to do is go up to where it says commands, click on that, and here we are. It says rough animator to flash. Now that Adobe Animate is ready to go, now let's go ahead and jump over to the iPad and see what we have. Here we are on the iPad. This is my list of projects. I'm going to tap on Red Bull Los. That makes sense if you go and watch that Artist Alfresco video. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is click Open Project. Now there's a lot of buttons to Rough Animator, which is fine. 
will go through that in a different video. But for now, I want you to pay attention to these layer names. Whatever you use for layer names, all of that stuff gets translated to your flash file once you get it imported. So here you see I have motion guide and we can drag the playhead over that way and you see that line. Let's turn these guys down. That line there, that's the line that I used for my rough. And if you notice, sprout some wings and then I follow that line to the end of the animation. And then eventually I have my character that then follows the rough. And then if I turn the rough down, I can see that there is a Red Bull cartoon version of me flying away because I have wings. Now that my animation is done, what I'm going to do is take my USB-C cable and plug it into my iPad. And I'm going to go to my computer and open up a new finder window. I'm going to tap on Carlos's iPad. What I'm going to do is swing over to where it says files, and then I'm going to scroll down to where it says rough animator, and it might take a second. There we go. If you notice, it says here bouncy Coco, bouncy Coco on here. Fenway green monster, Fenway green monster. So the one that we want is red bull low. So I'm gonna click and drag that to my desktop. Now that we got our animation off of the iPad onto the computer, let's go ahead and take a look at the next step. This part here, it's very important. What Jacob is asking us to do is go to the animation file. I'm gonna hit return and I'm going to change the extension to .r. I'm going to use R. And now I'm going to go to Adobe Animate up to Commands, Rough Animator to Flash. I'm gonna head over to the desktop, click Red Bull Los, and then I'm gonna click on the data.txt file and hit open. This is a very important dialog box. I think Jacob is going to be rewriting some of this, but currently, if you clicked OK to trace bitmaps, and basically what that would do if it was working, it would go through and take a look at all of the lines that you created in Rough Animator and then vectorize all of those lines. Well, right now, if I clicked OK, Animate would crash. If I click Cancel, what it's going to do is import everything as a bitmap image. And that's kind of what I want anyway. I like to finalize everything within Animate anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel. The script is going to go through and parse everything. And once that's done, what I'm going to do is come up here to the timeline, click on that, and you see here where we have character, rough, motion guide. That's exactly the layer structure that we saw in the Rough Animator app on the iPad. We can see that we have everything in place and we can even come in here, turn off the rough, turn off the motion guide. And if I hit enter, we have our animation. And from here, what I would do is lock everything down. I would create a new layer. I would probably name it final animation. And that's the layer where I would go in with my brush tool and finalize everything and do all the coloring and everything. And that's it. We prepared Adobe Animate on a computer to accept a rough animator file that we created on the iPad and then we exported that file to the computer that we then imported into Adobe Animate. And now we know that we could do a pencil test in rough animator on the iPad with a bitmap brush export that file over to Adobe Animate, and then finalize everything with the vector brush. That makes me happy, and I hope it makes you happy too. If you learned anything in this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you know anyone that is trying to get into filmmaking, animation, drawing, all that good stuff, send this video on over to them. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. And if you notice, there's a little bell right next to the subscribe button. Click on that so every time I come out with a new video, you'll be alerted and we'll all be learning together. We're going to go out there, we're going to live our life, and we're going to tell our story.
And with that, I hope this video finds you healthy and I hope this video finds you safe and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Coconut Justice.